The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. On this Friday, the 20th of, uh, of September, we're looking at the 8 o'clock. This is 8.06 in the morning during the early show. It's going to be re uh, recorded and played again at 10. We're looking at the Dow futures just about unchanged at 42,448. Fascinating. Leg D right here in the daily chart. If I go to the print uh-oh, what did I do? I just got a bell going on right now, which says that I did something wrong. Let me just check. Uh, everything seems to be okay. All right, so let's go on. Um, we're looking at the uh, YM trading unchanged. The E-mini, that is the S&P E-mini, continuous contract in a leg D in the uh, daily chart. I'm still getting a ping. What does that say? Post? Oh, post chart. Oh, that's right. Sorry. I thought I'd done that. Let me do that. It takes one second. Okay. Thank you, TV. Share screen. Screen. Go live. There it is. Okay. There it is. Sorry about that. We've got the chart. This is the E-mini right now. Had, it made a leg D and a, probably a peak D. There's no new high above the... Uh, 5797.50 level. If it's the S&P cash, we're talking about a yesterday spike high with a little doji candle in the end, uh, which I'm going to talk about this in a moment. But let me just say that at 5733.57, that's the cash. Um, if we go 5733.57 or 0.58, that extends this leg. Uh, if there's um, a lower high, that makes a peak. That's the way Chapman Wave methodology works. Let me just get this for you right now. For those of you who are new to my work, uh, I've got it right here. There it is. We try to identify the lowest low bar. In fact, we did. We've got the August 5th low in the Dow. Um, we've got the, uh, the, the alphabetized sequentially uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. A, B, C, D. D is the fourth highest peak. That's where other things can happen. It can also go E, F, and G with, and can have an instant restart to give you a brand new buy signal. So D, the fourth highest peak, is really important. Where are we? We're in the uh, S&P cash. We're in D. It could be an alternative account, but I'm calling it D for now. The, the Dow, I-N-D-U, is in a leg. Type it in right here. There it is. That is in leg D. Right, the doji candle. Um, now, what's fantastic is the actual candle is very tiny doji, but look where it came from, hundreds and hundreds of points higher. But you don't have a spiral to the upside. So this is a very orderly, even though today we've taken a little bit of insurance just because we're going to have so many long positions, that this is where I'm anticipating the pattern that we were looking at for a week and a half was the, actually more than that, was this cup. The cup and ladle pattern, not one of my favorite patterns because the handle, very often it spikes to the upside, and then what it does, it comes back underneath the, the lip on the left side, in this case 41,585 in the Dow. So I'm watching this closely. Uh, I don't have any signals other than the Chapman wave notation of leg D, possibly going to a peak D where you've got to be a little bit of little yellow light flashes. Let's go to the QQQ. That's the uh, NDX 100 trading down 71 cents at 482.65. It made um, a recovery high, but not an all-time high. And that all-time high was 503.52. And you can see even in the futures, NDX futures, you've got a move to the upside that hasn't yet actually taken out that left side high in the futures of 20, the continuous contract of the 22nd of um, August at 20,262. Now, of course, this is pre-record 2062. Yesterday's high was uh, 20,260. Oh, wait a minute, 260. No, 20. Oh, look at that, 20,203. Didn't take it out. 
So this is going to be very interesting because the Qs are kind of lagging. The SMHs, that's the semiconductor index, is down a dollar sixty at two thirty nine fifty. It's really been struggling. My contention has always been that where the semis go, the general market tends to follow, or uh, one of them is leading. But it's, that's the direction. So we've got to be a little bit cautious here. But look at this. You've got a rotation going. Look at Caterpillar down a dollar thirty three pre market. Uh, but look at that move yesterday to the 373 3, level, and I've got a left side, right side price time match. This is on the weekly chart. It should, by October, get to the 382.01 level. I think it might do that a lot quicker than that. So let's see what happens here. This is a good sign because this is a rot I love as long as there's a rotation in the market, it means that there is some leadership somewhere. Not everything, not 90% of stocks are going down. That's really important. Let's go to the IWM. Let's go R to RTY. There's the futures, the Russell 2000 continuous contract. A down about five or six points at 2271. It's gone to a leg D, and I, I would recommend uh, if anyone is in that we are along the IWM. We've taken a little bit off, uh, but I, I would recommend that raise a stop at this particular point because in leg D, underneath the previous peak EI, that's where you get a little bit, I, I would get a little bit cautious. So the IWM itself, IWM trading at 223.54 down 40 cents, did make this leg D. It did do the left side, right side price time match to the candle that I chose, but the high was 228.63. I think it's going to get there, but it might have just a little bit of a breather over the next uh, couple of days. All right, let's go to gold. Gold is just soaring to the upside. Top 26 at 2640. Uh, one of the reasons why we've been long uh, a gold stock is that with the mix of our portfolio, I felt very, it was really important the way that gold was holding. I still think it's more a play on the Middle East than gold itself, because if you look at the GDX, the GDX up 70 cents pre market at 40.42, it made a higher peak E high. It hasn't taken out the major high. On the left side of uh, the April of 2022, where it was at 4161. So, um, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 4161, yeah, 40.99. It just missed it. Look at this. I've got a left side, right side price time match. This is the plumb line. It's not the exact center, but it's the plumb line that I chose. And it's, it's a month late in getting to that left side. I still got all of September left, left to go for this candle to get to that level. Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent line dash green line was hit yes, uh, two days ago. Uh, so we'll see if it's able to get there. I think it is. I've only got it as a leg C in the weekly chart. So it should pull, should, uh, pull back for a peak C and then a leg D. So gold is acting really well. Silver, silver is, uh, oh, now it's playing catch up in, his, in a leg D in the daily. Look at this breakout in the weekly chart. And that just says the next left side high that we're looking at is on the week of the 12th of July at 12 at 32.46. That would be the level that I'd target. Right now it's at 31.70. we got a break coming up. Remember, this is the early edition, 8.14 a.m. It'll be replayed. This will be 10.14. Let's see where the market is at 10.14. Right now, the Dow futures are only up nine after a spectacular move to the upside yesterday. And the E-mini S&P is down 10. I'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee, so what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. As I said, uh, Silver's the early edition, 8, 18 a.m. in the morning. Uh, early edition will be replayed again at uh, 10 o'clock, my usual time for the Tiger Editions out. Check out my opening call daily newsletter. We've had some very interesting uh, positions put on for the, since the August 5th low. Look at this. Uh, the Silver's doing nicely. What happened to high-grade copper? Well, high-grade copper has started to move much better off the 200-period exponential moving average. That's a really good sign. Uh, it's actually... It should be a good economic sign. I'm not sure that that's true anymore, that uh, they called it Dr. Copper, because if it was moving high, it was good for international, uh, internationally business-wise. Uh, I don't know, uh, because there are so many other things going on. But I, I like the fact that it's coming off the, the low, just like it did at the 200-period moving average, making this little H pattern with a higher high uh, on the weekly chart. A lot of work has to be done in the, in the monthly chart, but the daily is improving as well. So that is important. Let's just go to the bonds because this is really important. Bonds are down um, off the high of four sessions ago in the 127s. Yeah, they're at 125 and 732. Uh, uh, the nine period moving average hasn't turned down yet. It is lower, still green, hasn't turned pink. I'm watching this closely. Leg D in the, uh, remember the objective in the Chapman Wave is to get you to a D. Buy signal gets upgraded to the, to guarantee, not guarantee, but almost guarantee that you're going to get to at least four, four higher peaks to D. And then it can do other things, but that D is your objective. But it did that in the weekly chart in this left side, right side price time, time match to the exact plumb line of the low that was made back in early April. Uh, from the 126 level uh, back in January, and then it made the same number of bars. Actually, it was two bars early to break that 126 level, and now it's gone up to the Chapman Wave inside wedge, green dash green, a resistance line, target resistance line, and it's just struggling to break above it. So I'm watching this because, you know, Fed talks about lower rates, but in fact, we've seen higher rates. Isn't that interesting? Okay, next thing I want to look at is uh, crude oil. Crude oil did very nicely um, coming off the 64 low, hit 70, 70, uh, I don't know if it hits, yeah, 71. Now it's at 70.75, down 41 cents. I'm just watching this closely. I had a choice uh, this morning to say, you know, is there a chance that it could start to move higher? I think it's just stuck in a range at this particular point. And if you look at natural gas, 
natural U and let me go to U and G because that's the one I've notated. U and G has had a nice move in this beautiful cup that goes to uh, U going to a W pattern down to the 20, 1258 low of August the 5th. Well, look at this. We've gone to leg C. Hasn't taken out yet that midpoint that was the mid-August high. Um, but it's it's holding quite nicely. But it is, I mean, natural gas, what is going on? Look at that monthly chart. It looks like a triple, triple ETF that just shrinks and shrinks and shrinks as it gets recalculated. Okay, that's enough. Now what I want to do is this. Uh, some questions came up. I need to get to them. Um, yes, PAVE, P-A-V-E. We did not get into PAVE. I kept saying we should get into uh, PAVE, but we had other things that we got into. But PAVE is the Global X-U.S. Infrastructure and Development ETF. All-time high. It's down 22 cents pre-market at 42.52. But yesterday it went to the 40.70s. Uh, and that is an all-time high. That is really, that's a big positive. So let me just sum it up. First of all, when people talk about uh, uh, just a major, uh, a major crash coming and they can see the end of the world, I don't see that yet. I am anticipating something like it, not the end of the world, but I'm expecting it in the market. But I just don't see anything yet that represents a massive overbought situation. I see some sectors that are digesting. I just spoke about the SMHs. I don't see anything I see, I see pullbacks. I even see some potential sharp pullbacks. What happens on the day after election day when both parties are extremely dissatisfied? Wow, I can't. I, it, it's impossible to even think of. Um, but all I can say is that as it stands on the charts right now, especially even the monthly charts, because if you go to the QQQ, remember, what's the objective in the Chapman Wave? To get you to a, a leg D. Or to get the to see the price go to PT, you don't have to do anything about it. You just watch. Okay, so the Invesco QQ Trust Use, which is basically the top 100 index stocks, has a peak C, holding very nicely. Month is not finished, so we can't even talk about this candle. But wait a minute, look, um, everything here. The nine is way over the 14 in the monthly chart. The MACD is rising. It's it's not great, but it's looking very good. The stochastic has pulled back, but it's still at 86% over 80 is great. On balance volumes a tad overboard, but nothing to see there other than there may be a little bit of a pullback at some point. I see this going to a new, a higher high, and then we'll have to make decisions. But at this particular point, I just don't see anything that says, uh-oh, this has to, to your health. Now, we are long for subscribers to my opening call. We've had some really nice positions, still got them. We've trimmed a little bit, only trimmed a little bit, because this is what we tend to do for money management. But at the same time, what I am looking at here is that within the context of that, let me just go back to this for the moment. This is the Dow itself, the Dow, not the, uh, year, this is not the futures, this is the Dow. Everything here is so orderly. Look, this is a, oh, I forgot to type. I had it once, and then I, I forgot to uh, retype it. This is a, t you remember, we talk about the Chapman Wave um, methodology. This is not. This is a standard traditional cup and handle. Invariably, what happens is the handle goes up, it looks great, but then it comes back and it retests and goes inside the handle one more time, and then other things can happen. And that's 41,585 as key support in, in the next uh, week, okay? Leg D, very orderly, higher highs and higher lows in the weekly chart. The monthly chart is a technique I developed years ago, which is called Chapman Wave. I have to always give it a title because it's something I developed. Um, cup and ladle. Look, a cup and a ladle. It's an extremely powerful methodology. What it does is the left side has a peak D, E, F, or even a G, pulls back sharply, and then under it starts a brand new buy signal that gets upgraded to a buy mode. But it doesn't break above that left side high until it goes through a B, but usually it's a C. And that C, when it takes out that left side high, it says you're not making a cup and handle. You're going straight above. You look like a cup and a ladle. And that ladle takes you very much higher. And then it goes to a D. The D invariably comes back and retests the left side lip, that in this case, 36,952, January 2022 high. 
And then, this is a technical Friday, so we're getting a little technical, and then it could start another move to the upside. This did not do that. Instead, it formed a channel wave in, uh, um, right here. Let me just give you that. Okay, look at this. So within within two bars, it breaks to another high, meaning that you've got an instant restart. So this could either be an E or a brand new E slash A, and that says, wow, you can give me go high. I don't want to get carried away. I'm just saying this is a fantastic action, very orderly, and I don't see anything just yet to say anything other than, uh, and this is what we're preparing for, just some kind of a digestive phase over the next couple of days, maybe. We'll see if that starts today. It doesn't have to, but I'm thinking there's a chance that we're getting a little toppy on the very short term. I'll be back. Basil Sharp for Tiger Ignition's Hour, early edition. Back in a few moments. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, we're back. Mel Chapman, early edition, 8.30. Must be some kind of market news coming out there. Let's watch the E-mini futures. So this is a perfect example of the instant restart. There was a peak D within three, two bars. It makes uh, three bars. It makes a new high. So that means you can count um, using an alternative count, E slash A, like it's a brand new A. F, that's the old F, but maybe a brand new B. And a G slash C. Um, and we've got a little double top forming right here. I don't know what's happening. It's already 8.30, and there has to be this big spike, big red or big green. Um, maybe it's coming up still. 
there's usually some, uh, this is usually, what is this today, is the um, non-farm payroll, is that what it is? Whatever it is. Uh, something's coming up and it isn't activating anything right now. So that's a good sign. And um, just wanted to show you, when I'm using the futures, I, if I have two parallel highs, because the shovel's in quarter point increments, um, and I see there's a little hiccup in one of my technical indicators, I call it a phantom peak. I want to be ready at, at a peak D, whatever the case is. So if it's a C and I'm waiting for a D and it pulls back sharply, I, I'm unprepared. This way I call that a phantom peak, call that a B, and if it goes higher, it'll be C and D. And invariably, this is exactly what happened with the Dow. Uh, look what happened here. We went, we went phantom peak right there on the 18th, I think, and 19th of uh, August, almost parallel high, it's just fractionally lower, uh, fractionally higher. I called it a, a phantom peak, and I said, I'm calling this a peak, um, a peak D, just to be prepared. Well, we went from 41,585, sharply lower. But then it did make a new high. So everything gets moved. I keep the red to say at this particular point. Don't forget, you did use a phantom peak. So I keep it there because this is all you want to be as prepared as possible for the next peak or trough. That's the ob obligation in the Chapman Wave methodology. So now it's gone to a D. D is where I think this is where we're going to have some little digestive phase. Uh, there's nothing technically indicating it other than the notation of D. We've done this so many times over the decades. At D, we get a little bit cautious. You can still go higher, but this is where we just say, hey, let's just let's hold on a minute. Let's see what's going on. All right. With that said, um, I want to show you something. Look, here's the IYT. IYT is the I Shares Transportation Average ETF. Um, and look, here it is at a peak D. Did a left side, right side, beautiful cup formation. Plum line was exactly at the low of 48.18. On October 20, uh, 2022, from the May 2021 70.60 high, it comes right back and it goes the exact month. It goes to a slightly higher high of 71.60, meaning the number of bars on the left side going down to a low equal the number of bars to the right side. It's just a beautiful technique I developed years ago with the Chapman Wave Inside uh, Wedge targeting exactly right there. And now this is another cup and, and ladle pattern. Okay, so this says that the transportation index is or average is holding very well right now. There's a slight bias to the upside, but wait a minute. Look what happened to FTX, Federal Express. Federal Express is down a little bit. 13%, minus 38 at 261.64 in this leg C, underneath the previous peak F high. And that's, that's telling us a story. That's why you can't be too sanguine saying, oh, everything's just hunky-dory. It's a sec sectorial uh, rally. There are some sectors that are working. There are some sectors that are not working. And if you're in the right sectors, everything looks hunky-dory. And if you're in the wrong sectors, you say, what is going What is this all-time high? Not, not for me. Well, you've got to be in the right sectors. That's the most important thing. So if I had to use uh, yeah, TFNN, a uh, number of the hosts, especially Larry Presento, makes a big deal about the one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. I use this in a different way. I call it the Chapman Wave Falling Axe Breakout Formation right here. Look, there's there's a declining. There are There's an expanding wedge, a declining expanding wedge. If you break out from the left side, you can have an equal move to the upside. And usually I say it has to be in the same angle. That's the beauty about this particular technique. Well, it's the same angle, but it's gone higher. And it is sharper. So this is a this should have been a powerful move. So this bad news is taking it down to the 260, 261 area. I mean, that's that's not good. So let's, let's look at USPS. Is that what it is? No, USPS. No, U, UPS. UPS, yeah, United Parcel Service. Yeah, it's the same pattern. This one has a, a, a one that I call the propeller shaft. Look, it goes, it has a, like a spike to the upside, and then it just goes sideways. And that's like a propeller shaft to the upside. So this is down 3.11. I think it's in sympathy with Federal Express at 129.02. But as I understand it, they kind of deal in different things. 
United United Postal Service and Federal Express, I think, in the main, they do shipping, but they they uh, what they ship, I think, and the the companies that are involved with them are slightly different. But look at this monthly chart of UPS. That looks pathetic, down to the 200 period moving average from the 230s down to one the 120s, and here it is at 129. Just hit 130 yesterday. So. So a really interesting thing. If this is telling us about, I like packaging. That's the one that tells me more about the United States economy than anything else. And look, packaging made an all-time high four sessions ago. Packaging core of America, all-time high. Leg D, so many Ds. It says, oh, you've got to watch the next couple of months. And leg E in the weekly chart, trading at 215.66 right now. That's a leg E. Could be an instant restart even. Um, so let me put this down. Look, there's your down arrow. Yes, your up arrow. So that's good. And this is your, oh, I did this. I remember what happened here. Yes, yes. Okay, I don't want to do that, even though it's technical Friday. Let's call this, and now I'm just calling it a peak E in the daily chart. So that's just different chart patterns altogether. All right. Next thing I wanted to look at was, I had a question about, where was it? Oh, F F F FXI, FXI, that is China large cap. Yes, there's that big spike I said yesterday that very often you go peak C1, C2, slightly under the peak, left side peak C, peak C slightly under the, the other one, and then you get a, a C4, and then what happens is there's a sudden spike and you finally get your leg D. That's exactly what we got in FXI. That's very good. It's up 20 cents pre-market at 27.33. And it's got this potential cup formation. So China is doing better. It's got a lot of work to say. It's really improving a great deal, but it's coming off the lows. You can see that was a big move that it gave back. 20.87 was the low in October 2022. 20.86 was the low in January of this year. Um, Penny lower, that means you have to restart. This is a peak A right here. There's another A, another penny above uh, the high of July, 27.60. It goes to 27.61. It makes a, an, another grade uh, peak B underneath that. So it's a work in progress. All right, we've got a break coming up. Um, let's see what I want to do next. I want to do, go to the futures, E-mini futures. And in the, in the break, I'll talk about it when we return. A Basil Chapman early edition Tiger Finishes Hour. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, so uh, the question came uh, up about the XLF. This is the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund, leg D. Look, cup and, this is a chap wave cup and ladle pattern. Went right through the left side high from 2022. That was at about 41 comes all the way down to 29.59. But I chose this particular candle to make it a left side, right side price time match. That was the plumb line, not the low. You couldn't do it, it was lopsided. So that was it. And this is Chev Wave inside wedge target repellent line. I find that if I continue this line, very often the price still goes to the highs. And look, here it is. Oh, oops, a little sensitive there. So let's do that, there it is. So look, it went right to that line. Isn't that fascinating? Um, all right. So within the context of the um, spider financial spider fund, um, this is the financials. We're almost about to go to a leg E uh, in the weekly chart. And look, this is the, this is a technique that I developed where you've got a cup formation. I call this the plumb line the, the, from the high to the low. This is the low was one, two, three, four, five, six bars. Getting back to that very same high, one, two, three, four, five. This is the six bar. Yesterday was the six bar, and the high that put, the high that was made, right there, was on the third of September, forty-five eighty-eight, and yesterday's high was forty-five eighty-one. How about that? So today, it's up four cents pre-market. If it goes a little higher. That's great. That's the technique that I like to use. I didn't have a chance to draw in the uh, inside wedge target repellent dashed green target repellent line. There it is. Worked out perfectly right there. Now, uh, we, we don't have this particular ETF. Instead, we have Bank of America, which I said lags. JP Morgan is the one we would have wanted, but we wanted to get something that was that had a brokerage area, it had the financials, it had a lot of things going for it, but on a percentage basis, it could actually do even possibly as well or even better than JP Morgan. Well, it's done very nicely. We've been in for some time, and here it is at 40.92 uh, 40 pre-market, 40.87 yesterday. There's the cup formation. It took out the left side high, so this could be a brand new leg B, in the daily, a leg, gray leg B in the weekly chart. Great because all the technicals are weak there. Yeah, they they not great, but they are. It's better. And the nine period moving average in the daily flipped to positive with an L, meaning the nine period moving average crossed positive uh, yesterday at the close, and that's good. So this is a work in progress, but I just wanted to show you the, this particular technique. Next thing that I was asked about was could I look at uh, the HGX? HGX. So Ben, I don't know. Um, yeah, I can't remember your question. This is at an all-time high. Look, leg F. This could be. This is not an instant restart because it's taken four. It's got to be three bars or less to go from a D to the next higher high. So this is four bars. So this is calling this E and F in the weekly chart, in monthly chart. Only a leg B 
in the weekly chart, isn't that interesting? That means that yields are not actually affecting this at all, although they are lower. They're not breaking to major lows. Okay, and look, this is a leg uh, C. I'm calling it in the uh, uh, daily chart. And the MACD is good. Stochastic's at 92%. That's fabulous. That's what you want to see. So let me just do this uh, because it's important. We've had a rotation. We've had a rotation that said, for goodness sake, the yields are going um, higher. Why on earth would Toll Brothers be going to an all-time high? Lenar, the HGX, um, Philadelphia Housing Index, Sector Index, uh, because markets don't often do what you think they're going to do. The relationships, I've spoken about this for about maybe it's a year and a half. I've been saying, don't think that those old um, tropes that, that we could rely on, that bonds go higher, so that means yields come down, and that means stocks go down, or gold goes up and the dollar comes down. It, we, that, those relationships aren't perfect anymore. They used to be just like mirror images. So this is very interesting, because you remember I spoke about a, a Bondi, Crudy, a Dolly, Goldie, and Vixie, that's bonds, crude oil, um, uh, the dollar, uh, gold, and the volatility index, um, those relationships are singular as far as I'm concerned. You've got to look, look at this. The VIX index should be at the, the markets as highs, right? The VIX index should be at lows. It's not. It's holding the 200 period moving average as a key support level. It's at 16.09 right now, uh, down 24 cents. Um, and yesterday, yes, we made a lower low than the last couple of weeks, but look, Right here, uh, the 16th of August, uh, that was the VIX was at 14.65. And on the 30th of August, the VIX was at 14.78. And it ran up to 23.76 on the uh, 6th of September. So this VIX index is, in a way, it's making high highs and high lows. It says, don't rule out that at some point we're going to get a sudden bump for whatever reason, who knows what it could be, and just be prepared for it right now. So that's what I'm saying. That's Number one is we've made all-time highs. We've got to those Ds in the Dow and the S&P. We've not yet even gone close to the highs in the QQQ or the semiconductors. The IWM is running well. It's close to the highs, um, and even now pre-market is only down 34 cents. And the Dow is uh, pre-market. The Dow futures up 20. The S&P futures are down five. They were down much more earlier on. So this is a market that says, wow, uh, all-time highs. It depends on what you're looking at, right? I mean, if you were in F Federal Express, you say, the oh, economy must be doing great. Oh, my God, down 12%. What's going on? So each one must be thought of separately. Um, now, the, another thing is... Um, let me check here. Oh, uh, should, can I? Yes, I'll repeat it right now. In fact, this is exactly what I want you to do before we go to the final break. SPX.X. Here we go. So the S&P, oh, talk about this. Let me, let me do it in the monthly chart. Look, first of all, I'm going to drag this across right here. From the 666 low that was made back in... 2009, that was March of uh, 2009, Monday. The previous Friday, the 6th, is where we went along the diamonds at the exact low. We tried to do that. We tried to get peak Ds or whatever it is in the Dow to be able to time it. Uh, sometimes it works great. Uh, other times we're a day or two late, but we usually, we try to get the trend that way. The S&P has gone with this inside track repellent line all the way through the highs of 2022 at 48.18, but that was a peak B, and I spent a lot of time saying, I don't know, we, I don't often get monthly charts fading at a peak B. Something's going to have to happen. Either we make a peak D under it and then negates it, or we go right through, and we went right through. And where are we now? Testing for the fourth month, the pink and green uptrend inside. This is inside track, repellent, propellant zone, and we've gone, we've snuck above it. So the monthly chart, nothing wrong here. I have got it as an F, and I've got it even as a possible inside a, a, a D. 
Okay, recycle. And then the weekly we'll talk about the Groucho Marx eyebrows and we'll talk about the leg tea uh, in, the, in the daily. I don't see anything negative just yet. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee, so what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Hi folks, in this last segment, remember this is the early edition, 8.54 a.m. and will be replayed at 10.54, who knows where the market is at that time. So what am I anticipating? I'm anticipating this is a leg D at this particular point in the uh, daily chart. The, uh, the fact that we've broken above the left side peak, peak E in the weekly chart, come down sharply, and this could be an F slash B, says to me, is if that nine period moving average in the weekly chart crosses positive in the next two weeks or two, three weeks, we're going to go higher. That's number one. Number two is on a very short term basis, this particular pattern here, and I'm going to go to the to the uh, I keep the S&P because it looks quite a bit like the Dow um, says that the handle should go the cup and handle the handle should go higher. But the problem with the cup and handle pattern for my experience is that it goes back into the handle. And then you, you get a whole choppy choppy. So I'm expecting we're getting close to a choppy period with slightly lower highs and slightly lower lows. And for the next maybe week or so, we haven't made the top yet. We haven't got a guarantee yet. I'm anticipating there's some kind of a, a short term digestive phase coming up. The weekly chart, everything about it that I look at that's important is positive, except that the MACD hasn't crossed positive. The stochastic is at 80%. That's important. If it goes to 78%, you can have a bit more of a pullback. If it goes to 83%, that's good. So digestive phase, um, all-time highs. When you get to all-time highs, to be able to say that you've got resistance is difficult, but we've got resistance that's just been pierced in this very long-term 
inside track repellent zone. And I'm just looking at this to say that's going to be very important. And the whole candle, that two candles that I'm looking at here suggest to me that at some point in the next two weeks, maybe three weeks, I'm not sure, um, that we will be testing the 5500s in the S&P. But that's my thinking. We haven't got the signal yet to come down. So uh, the signal will be in place if at any time next week there is a close under 5575 in the uh, e-mini uh, on a daily basis. So with that said, we are still positive. We have got a little insurance that we've put in today, but mostly we, we still love our Microsoft is doing well and our other Bank of America and our other stocks. Robin Hood is another one. Have a great session. Stay tuned for it'll be Tommy O'Brien coming up at nine o'clock. And of course, great program. Have a wonderful weekend. I will see you.